I want to get this issue uh, sort of elaborated on while it's still somewhat fresh in my mind. Um, so just focusing on politics, I, I watched this um, Progress SA talk uh, given by Gwen. Uh, Gwen Nguengya, I hope I'm saying that right, um, who used to be a, a former member of the DA, uh, but she really gave a lot of information in her talk. It was very insightful. I had no idea that um, Musi Maimane had gone so far into essentially the, 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 the racialist camp, how, you know, sort of uh, the morality has just kind of collapsed, uh, chasing after... Uh, Julius Malema's, you know, New South Africa, effectively, or should I say New New South Africa, in the image of that kind of racialist bullshit. Um, and, you know, it, it's very depressing watching the question and answer session of, of this talk, which uh, has cut together, I guess, all the question and answer sessions, uh, because she gave the same talk at, I think, three different venues at least. Um, and, you know, you can just see the, the level to which the kind of... Um, the sociological version of, of the social justice ideology which betrays the constitution of South Africa uh, quite starkly, you know, just, just the penetration of the fascistic values um, in, in the student population and effectively how it's been promulgated by, you know, institutions which have effectively betrayed uh, constitutional values is, is, is very sad. Um, I wanted to clean up uh, some things that I said uh, in some earlier recordings um, because I've, uh, being enlightened by Gwen's talk, I, I found uh, a better way to talk about an issue. She didn't talk about this issue directly. She was not talking about um, the promotion of a quality act, but I, I do trace a, a lot of the moral corruption and then the subsequent uh, state corruption, which is essentially... Um, concealed by by the, the corrupting moral, you know, sort of confusion and convolution, which is what a lot of, you know, this kind of ideological um, gerrymandering uh, uh, facilitates, um, you know, in kind of the, the autocratic concentration of ad hoc administrative um, political responsibilities on something that I can only uh, describe as a kind of, as, as the, uh, the, the Fuhrer kind of... Um, conception that the, that the identity needs a protector and there needs to be this, you know, and, and so, and, and until people can sort of imbibe this kind of, this role of protecting the identity, there is no vehicle or facility for making any progress, you know, that the idea is that progress is only made via identity consciousness and speaking on behalf of, of the collective, you know, um, which is, you know, the, the fascistic conception of politics, really. Um, it's interesting, I, I, I do think, uh, I, 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 this is a slight tangent to what I wanted to focus on, but I do think um, uh, Gwen is a, is a brilliant speaker, but I think she could have elaborated more on, on what a normative, uh, what, what a normative framework or a normative perspective entails as opposed to just a descriptive one, you know, and, and so essentially if you were a racial essentialist, essentially you, you don't need norms, you don't need to have a normative outlook in life, because you just say, no, no, my identity was given to me, and it has built in conditionals, which I have to react to, so I'm just being a true being, as I am ideologically following this vehicle for for progress, which has to be done according to the conditions. It's just a kind of, you know, th there's no choice in one's consciousness about it. One merely just makes, uh, uh, I'm talking about the internal uh, mechanics of it, one merely just uh, uh, um, subscribes 
to 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 the identity as as the as the label to one's soul you know so so you just kind of identify as it um th there's no normative choice there I, I mean if there is it's 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 a it's a virtually hollow you know sort of thing um the the argument made for it is not a normative form of argument it's it's a um it's essentially a racist argument um it's, it's, it's an abject argument as to, you know, this is innate in me. I have no choice about it. I can either be a kind of a willing um, subscriber to this group morality or this morality that I, according to the, to the narrative, to the descriptive narrative, am already a part of the process therein, you know, anyway. Um, another way of also dissecting this from the intellectual standpoint, which is essentially, you know, all of this is essentially justified through soci sociology and in specifically in the sort of the school of thought of social constructivism or whatever. Now, you see, the problem with social constructivism is that it's arbitrary to make, to, to essentially to track, if you're going to make statistical socially constructed um, models about what is going on you have to see that it's according to a normative system according to a moral system it's arbitrary to classify categories that you track you can you can reclassify any set of categories you can go tall people short people you can use racial groups but if whatever whatever category you use it's going to be impractical. It's going to have, it's going to be fundamentally unworkable on the level at which it's not appropriate to treat people as an, an amorphous, nebulous, uh, uh, single entity. You know, so you're going to essentially say that, you know, basically you can't do it unless you can make the moral claim that people sharing this category have the same moral responsibility or share the same, you know, something like that. Now, that kind of claim essentially is down the road of war crime, uh, to put it short. Collective punishment, collective responsibility. The, the, these are concepts that are uh, against the international law. For I mean, you know, we, we used to, as a culture, recognize the kind of uh, uh, the insanity and the barbarity of, of this way of thinking in generalizations and reducing people in this way to a dehumanized, you know, kind of label system. Um, you know, th this is essentially the kind of morality that apartheid ran on. So it's, you know, doubly disgusting to see um, people essentially with the same moral structure as apartheid in, in the, as the majority of a student body clapping for speeches made in this vein of fascistic uh, uh, ideology. It, it's, it's very depressing. Um, now, I understand, when I was talking about um, uh, uh, the equality clause, um, which uh, uh, I was going on about, uh, was it, uh, which is a section nine, but I think it was subsection two. Uh, but anyway, when I was going into that subsection, and, and trying and, and describing it, uh, I was you know not, not that exact, and I ended up say uh, I ended up trying to make a point, which I still think you know if you take everything that I said, and you kind of work out what I was uh, meaning by it, it was um, you know, it was a bit of a ragtag, and and you know some of these things, and I said that you know essentially, you have to look at the effects of of the different ways that this can be interpreted. Uh, and you have to take the effect of each of those interpretations and make essentially a kind of arbitrary distinction to show that the one is... In, and what I meant when I say arbitrary, I meant arbitrary in relation to the original text in the Constitution. That's what I, was, what I meant by what I said. Um, Obviously, if you are, if you have any kind of legal, you know, sort of background, as soon as someone says the word arbitrary in, in terms of interpretation, it sounds like you're making a sort of ad hoc thing. And it is, you know, somewhat problematic uh, on, on some level. Um, because, you know, it's it sort of, uh, I mean, within generalization, uh, within general terms, you're perhaps, you know, uh, doing something in which you could sort of 
uh, play the wiggle room in which you're subverting the rule of law and, you know, things are void for vagueness. But anyway, I actually, I, I should have said it at the time that there is probably a way of rooting this into the text and Gwen actually did actually solve this problem in that, uh, well, in my mind at least, um, so I just want to go back to this particular issue, which is that instead of using some kind of arbitrary distinction in the effect, which, I mean, um, again, it's not really arbitrary, because I, I do think that the argument that I charged with it um, shows that substantively the one interpretation is clearly wrong. So um, this all has to do with categories of dis disadvantaged persons. The, the subsection that I'm talking about in Section 9 the Equality Act is that, uh, sorry, the Equality Clause in the, in the Bill of Rights. Um, is that um, government can make measures and provisions for categories of disadvantaged persons. Now, and I mean, it's very simple. So, so basically the, the two interpretations fall on two separate lines and the, the one is obviously incorrect. So the one interpretation is that the category is of um, is, is fundamentally made up of persons and the, uh, uh, which can lead to a very strange problem in which you're including people that don't actually have disadvantages but they merely belong to categories of persons which include people that are disadvantaged. Whereas, obviously, it is more robustly, uh, for the other reasons that I also mentioned, for the other arguments that I also gave when I addressed this point, is that it's obviously the categories are not made up of persons. They're made up of disadvantages, or, or and they're made up of a specific disadvantage which pertains to persons. So it's actually categories of disadvantage that persons um, uh, possess. So it's categories of persons possessed of disadvantage essentially, is, is what you would read into the text in terms of, but, uh, yeah. And that, that is the only way that you get all three of those words sort of actually in effect at a single time, rather than essentially being able to play the wiggle room of the very strange interpretation that it's categories of persons that in generalization hold a disadvantage, that by the, the magic trick of, of, of a generalization, of a, of a stereotype, which, you know, how would you get that interpretation from a non-racialist fucking document? The Constitution, which is a non-racialist um, framework, that that is the highest value. You know, and it's also interesting that, that you get a... Um, That, that injustice can be, by generalization, extended to people that don't, in particular, have a disadvantage. I mean, it's just, you know, and, and, then, and then you get this, this whole subversive arena of subtext that, oh no, but by ideological interpretation of construction, uh, it, is, it, is a, it belongs to the collective, not to the person as an individual, that... that, that yeah, I mean, you, you, you get this very strange sort of inception in which, uh, I mean, what, what has been abused by um, government essentially in crafting legislation in which um, specifically the Promotion of Equality um, Act that That by plenary fiat, government can define uh, unfair discrimination as fair. 
when that that very technical power was essentially just built in to the legislation in government being able to dispense a very sp a very very particular programs of addressing disadvantage and those programs that address disadvantage directly obviously in some technical sense indirectly exclude people from enjoying uh you know exclude from from the point of a republic in which everyone is supposed to share the public thing you know and so essentially um there is an allowance for the government to dispense um, special measures to deal with specific injustices. But now, you know, the, the ability for it to sort of generalize that injustice as an ideological um, unknown quantity and then to, by plenary fiat, just sort of extend it at will. Um, and then, in fact, if you actually challenge this, you know, I mean, it, it's so ideologically pernicious because... It really is a self-fulfilling prophecy, that, that this identity consciousness. You know, if you challenge uh, uh, the flaw in it, then you're, you're labeled a racist. And in fact, you perhaps even contravene the section in the Promotion of Equality Act in which you're harassing someone for challenging their intellectual view on, you know, essentially this unconstitutional piece of legislation. And, you know, which, which just essentially empowers this... This ideological fascism is effectively what it is, and, and this corruption of state morality, which we, we now see at its, hopefully at its zenith, you know, when you've got these academics that have been propelling this, um, uh, you know, I, 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 I've, I've, I've said it in other recordings, but, you know, these academics, they, they really belong in a prison cell for constitutional damages. You know, the, these are essentially, these are the kinds of people that, that essentially fermented, you, you know, I mean, they, they should have been right alongside the Nazi, you know, the, the academics that supported this whole movement in, in Weimar Germany. The, you know, that should have been in the gallows in, in terms of the war crime, you know, kind of uh, um, in, in the Nuremberg trials. You know, these are the people that belong in that queue. In, senten in, in the sentence being carried out. I mean, obviously, I, I'm never promoting anything that, that is extrajudicial, but at some point, we need a judicial solution to these people that have fr flagrantly eviscerated the Constitution. The, these disgusting, fascistic, pseudo-intellectuals, you know, and of which there is a public wing of journalists in support of these, dis you know, that have disseminated and corrupted the youth effectively as well. You know, like Eusebius MacKaiser, disgusting people like that. You know, war criminals in waiting, fomenting, you know, who knows, you know, if, if, if it continues down this path. Because, you know, this is how they get you. This is how Weimar, I mean, Hitler waited 18 years, you know. Uh, in infiltrating the, the moral value structure and pumping up this, the, 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 the concept of the Fuhrer, you know, which, you know, he could, uh, he was considered a clown and up till the very end, even in power, you know, they thought, okay, well now finally we're just not going to hear the ideological screeching anymore. We're not going to hear the endless complaint. And that was really the beginning of, of the conspiracy theories, not the end. You know, they, they thought that, you know, they give them power and finally we, we get some respite. Not so. It gets more hysterical. It gets more, you know, and, and now since they, and then when they have the authoritarian apparatus, it's just, uh, uh, it's, it's goodbye. Um, because now, you know, you don't hear the dissidents anymore. You just, you know, uh, in the dead of night, the, the Gestapo come on your doorstep. The ideological police. Which, you know, effectively we, 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 uh, I mean, you know, I mean, I mean, you, you can see it, you know, for example, the so-called anti-fascists, how ironic in America, you know, you, you can see how they're sort of, they, they build this movement in which, you know, I mean, you, you don't understand, these are the same psychological profiles of Nazi supporters. This is, they always think that they're doing it in, in for social justice. Um, the whole thing is, is that how do you get a liberal to run a concentration camp that's really 
you know, where this is going, you know, and, and I mean, Hitler, it took them years to work out how to um, encourage people effectively to do looting and to, uh, uh, you know, rob places, to build up the confidence in order to perpetrate eventually, essentially, the coup and the authoritarian, you know, kind of police state. And, uh, I mean, you know, we're clearly going in that direction. That's what's happening on all fronts. This is why you see so many things burning. This is why, you know, um, the, the, the just, you know, burning uh, um, universities, burning uh, buses, burning infrastructure, you know, it's, it's this kind of, um, is how do you get people that have the psychological profile of liberal, how do you get them eventually to running the concentration camp? That, that is, the, is the thing that we're engaged in. And we have no um, legal, I mean, you know, if, if, if we, we have the strongest weapon that was ever devised in a legal framework, which is the Constitution. And it, it's, it, it, it has a, a toothless effect, essentially, because, well, I mean, I, I don't know why people have not challenged the, um, well, the academics, I mean, uh, for one, you know, the, the, I mean, obviously, you know, academic freedom is one thing. But when you are disrupting a normative system, a normative framework, w w by, by an ad hoc and arbitrary sociological reduction, which, you know, in its technical sophistication, claims that it's actually gotten insights that everyone needs to look at. Because statistics, you know, which can be framed any which way, have some kind of factual input in policy. I mean, it's fucking retarded. And, you know, even when they, you follow th their, their prescription, what do you get? You get a worse situation. You get a sabotaged economy. And, in fact, you, you lay down all the, the railroad tracks for um, looting the state, for, for wholesale corruption. That is what this ideology facilitates and what it has always facilitated. Because the protector class of the identity gets gets the hidden hands, they get the invisible power that has to come with the ad hoc administration of these, what they always describe as very sophisticated matters. So, you know, they give their whole one-sided speech about how they're complaining about the structural inequality, and then you ask them, well, then what is your solution? And they say, well, in another breath, it's very complicated. Basically, we need more concentration of power. We need more ad hoc administrative roles that control everything. We need rings of power, you know, to 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 um, to give form to to the internal constitution of of the identity matrix. You know, it, it, it's like literally, you know, we need nine rings to 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 rule men, and you know, and then the the hidden ring of power, um, which they all lust after, essentially, which is you know. Uh, please let me um, absorb the narcissistic injury needed to be able to to uh, uh, reestablish my self-esteem via a reactive violence to the oppression in the system. You know, it, it's a fucking self-fulfilling uh, uh, ideological narrative. Uh, it can't be wrong. It can only just agitate itself and antagonize itself and whip itself up into a more extreme version of its... Uh, 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 I mean, and and you know, and and that I I mean I I I, I could have probably researched. I could have perhaps asked more people uh, and and known about this. But you know, the idea that Musi Maimane has just collapsed in w w with this this you know essentially this um, corruption trend, uh, which I mean uh, obviously the DA might still be a cleaner party, but I mean, as soon as, as soon as you run this ideology, as soon as you try to run this form of ideology, it's just unworkable. It will never resolve in solutions. It will always just aggravate itself in, in, in its own failure and, and just scale up its interventionist, you know, sort of, you know, it, it, it prides itself on failing because it just proves that there are evil people that require more discipline effectively you know, and you get these weird paradoxical arguments which essentially just keep on begging the question you get these weird complaints like there was this woman who 
who essentially said, no, but you're, you saying this now is undermining the idea of black professionals. Uh, uh, no, so you have to, you're forced to protect the authoritarian power in the policy, essentially. You're forced to, uh, to stick up, uh, um, you know, you, you can't say inconvenient truths. Uh, because if you derail the policy effectively, uh, the, the ideological backbone of the policy, uh, then, you know, so it, it just shows you the kind of the, the weird sort of tyrannical authoritarianism already in, in its ideological um, gestation. You know, that's what we have corrupting the state. Um, you, you have this strange ideological filter that, that's intervening in people's discernment. You know, you, you, you can't, uh, you don't trust people to actually be able to deploy their own judgment. And because people are so disempowered in such a way, you completely break down interpersonal um, engagement. You know, th th there is no honest communication now. It's all regulated effectively. It's displaced by regulation. As well, and yeah, I mean, and and then you're not allowed to question the the intelligence of the regulation or or, or the um, appropriateness or, or whatever or the, or the effectiveness or efficacy or um, or morality of the regulation because then you're undermining the people that are represented by uh, the values uh, uh, entrenched in, in that corrupted um, regulation. And so you're not even allowed to, to sort of jump, you know, to jump off the train wreck that, that's about to happen, to jump off, off, off the, the train that's heading towards the, the, um, the collision. And, yeah, I mean, it's... Uh, you know, th that's the level of insulation that, you know, essentially the vanguard of this train subscribes to. And, um, and all they can do is clap in a, in a huge auditorium. You know, I mean, f f f for the fascistic values that are espoused by this hero students, you know, um, standing up for the fucking regulation in the country, you know, bravely sticking up. Um, for the betrayal of the Constitution. Quoting, oh yeah, the student as well, he quotes apartheid legislation that endorses his view. Now, he, he doesn't quote it in order to, to, to disagree with it. He, he quotes it to say, no, even apartheid understood this about black people, that they are collective entities, you know, and, and and he wants to say that this, that this is some kind of African uh, uh, um, consciousness. I mean, no, this is Nazi values. I mean, th th this whole ideological uh, uh, bullshit was invented in Weimar Germany. You know, it, it is deployed where, where it's conveniently deployed, where you, you set up a conspiracy about the structure of things. You know, the Nazis called it the Jewish conspiracy, and now we have uh, white monopoly capital. And through the magic of generalization, there is a one-size-fits-all vehicle. You know, the, 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 there is a single point at which, you know, everything, all, all the good can be uncovered and extracted from white privilege. You know, it's, it's, I mean, it really is ludicrous, you know, the, 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 to, to think that uh, the dynamism and the complications involved in, 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 in any sort of part of life can just be sort of ideologically solved by this weird kind of oversimplified ideation of something called social justice where essentially you know 
you believe in this zero sum game that if it were just corrected everything would be fine you know that as long as you're, you're tilting it towards balance in the zero sum of 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 the of the privilege you know that that somehow everyone is is enriched in some sense you know it, it, the, the kind of ideological enforced blindness and and i'm guess you know it, it really is so stupid and fragile that you can just see how close it is to the emotional um you know just how emotionally charged the so-called intellectual engagement is it's hardly intellectual engagement it's one step away from if you disagree with me if you don't if you don't treat my self-esteem in such a way you know, because already, you know, I, I mean, she, Gwen herself only gets that far, essentially. Uh, also, I mean, she, she can only almost, she's only permitted to make these arguments to these people because of their value in her gender and her race in, in the paradigm of um, uh, uh, disempowerment. So, you know, they, they have a, a built-in, you know, kind of um, inhibitor, uh, you know, that, that essentially you can, you can notice that the only people that actually bring up the full hysterical um, level of, 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 of insulation and opposition to her view are women. They're not men. You know, the, 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 the men that ask questions... Uh, uh, you know, they have to try and make a reasoned, uh, or at least the appearance of, of a reasonable argument. Whereas uh, the women have, have no inhibition, really, um, of, of, you know, sort of turning up the, the, the emotional turmoil and the weird kind of sadistically edged um, you know, ideological vampirism, you know, um, that, that is effectively, you know... Which, which is the right of the Führer, effectively, um, to, to, to protect the identity with passion. You know, it, 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 I mean, it, it is interesting that, you know, in, in, supposed, in the suppression, uh, in the secular times that we live in, in, in the so-called secular times, in the suppression of religion, how it has almost manifested in this, uh, generally described as a messianic cult of social justice. Um, but anyway, I, I'm, I'm just trying to repeat a point that I heard made by David Berlinski um, near the end of an interview uh, that he gave on YouTube to, I think it's called Rational Faith, but it was a very interesting interview. Um, I'm going to link both the Progress SA talk. It's really wonderful to watch. Um, and uh, maybe the David Berlinski thing as well. Is, it's also quite interesting. Um, because, I mean, you, you can see the same kind of delusion in the scientific realm as you see it um, and, and, the, and the, the supposed authority that scientists try to, to represent is, the, is, is really the same model um, that is used in identity politics. It's, it's, the, it, uh, it's in a different field, it's, uh, but it's, it's, uh, it's got that same kind of dogmatic orthodoxy and imposition of a subtext. Um, The imposition of a subtext of of of, of a unilateral framework um, that doesn't have to justify and substantiate itself and contend itself against competing frameworks because it just is the truth. It just is the the natural innate state, you know. Um, that if you if you disagree, it's because. Um, there is something that you should be educated in, you know. Um, and that really has to also fundamentally do with, with, with the, the inability of the ideology to really grapple with any kind of normative regulation. That, because it is not regulated in, in its own internal constitution by um, a normative system. It, it, is, it is essentially the, the age-old um, fallacy, almost, of confusing an is for an ought. Because it is such a way, uh, we ought to, to be reactive um, 
identity conscious uh, um, adherents and supporters of our of our um, of 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 bringing balance to the is you know so so there's this focus on on a quality of what is true and and the idea of how that this is happening is just a mirrored reflection of of this kind of calculation of of this historical reduction sociological reduction all of which is you know fundamentally arbitrary um but it's just you know, it, it's it's effectively uh, uh, idol worship i i mean you know it, it's the most kind of of brain dead idolatry that, that you can imagine uh because essentially that is their moral argument is this, is that we have these sets of facts i'm not interpreting them i am them that, that's a fact i am part of them you know i am part of this world i am part of 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 this process that is innate and my justice is in my blood you know and then they say this weird kind of fascistic poetry half the time it's um you know it's sad because you know when they actually if they do win if they do come out on top you know they create such a disgustingly fragile civilization that it, it can't sustain itself i mean the nazis i do think internally exhausted themselves you know the the the, the, the endless propaganda because you know their, their whole thing is that no, no no we just want to scale the peak and then it's over we just want to succeed and then and then and then we can stop you know but that's not how it works that's not what it is you know i mean that's the promise that it makes that's the 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 prediction uh, that 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 it requires but uh, uh it's weird that the ideology is is a self-fueling fire that can only grow it doesn't ever um yeah and and you and people have thrown themselves into that fire and uh it, it must be stated that Musi Mayamane is one of those people. I mean, I'm 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 actually fucking embarrassed that I I didn't vote for Cope. I knew I knew that I should have voted for Cope. I did I did I did know that I I th I thought in my head. The leader of Cope is an honourable man. He actually has a moral compass. Musi Mayamane has made a poster, uh, uh, an election poster that says. Uh, fair jobs or something like that yeah. um or was it something it was just like three words or two words it was is fair job access or something like that and i just thought now i know that that's that's part of the the the, the forked tongue language of julius malema where he's nice on one side and and then and then he says the opposite thing the other day because that that's meant that poster was meant to say everything to everyone it was meant to essentially say maybe it connotates uh, affirmative action is going to sort of uh, uh, to white voters it's meant to say that affirmative action is going to be turned turned down and that we're going to have more of a meritocracy and uh, to black voters is it meant to mean like we're going to scale up um, uh, access to jobs by um, just promoting the economy because we're supposed to be the more liberal party that's that's pro-business that's helping that we want business to go I think is it fair access to jobs <sighs> yeah I mean, I mean that, that, that that's the thing is that when you've got that kind of I mean I mean but th that is I mean that, that is the line that the Democratic Party has effectively taken is it's tried to to sort of play into the identity politics You know, which is, is just going to make this phase much slower. I mean, it would be better if, if all the identitarians just made their own fucking party so that they could, be, they could be spoken at or spoken to directly and they could speak at others directly and you could get a very, very definitive synthesis of what it is exactly that they, that they say. You know, so... so, so you know, you could actually start tracking what, what what their contribution is, what their supposed contribution is in, in the political debate, you know, and you can start really getting its voice out there so that hopefully it can be debunked and it can be, you know, deflated as, as the disgusting kind of moral trash that it is. You know, I mean, this is racism that we have known before in this country you know, does does no one have a memory except for 
you know, it seems very few politicians, I mean, there are also probably a lot of them in the ANC who don't know what the fuck is going on. Um, but the, the structure of the ANC is almost fundamentally a corrupting kind of, you know, cadre deployment uh, um, system or whatever. But yeah, yeah, I'm never going to make that mistake again. I mean, in, unless there is a radical, you know, sort of 180 degree, you know, sort of thing, which, I mean, who am I kidding? That's probably not going to happen for the DA, but yeah, I should have voted for Cope versus... I'm, yeah, I'm a bit ashamed about that. I, I should have... Yeah, I, I mean, I heard it from other people that the DA had just sort of transformed itself into the ANC light. And, and I, I almost didn't believe it just because of, you know, the, the kind of the history of the party. But the idea that they have just invested into uh, the toxic side. I mean, I did hear, I, you do hear stories about one DA member who, you know, it, it's... Uh, who is essentially a very stark identitarian, um, who has the same kinds of, of uh, uh, social problems uh, that sort of just seem to to unfold around her because of her, her um, ideological perspective, probably an ENFJ or something. Is a huge problem. I was, I was going to talk about perhaps some of the, of the psychological structures that correlate to some of the ideological things because I found something uh, recently, but it's going to be way too confusing to start talking about that now. But anyway, I just wanted to add quickly a tiny extension. Um, the on 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 the point of the normative. Um, of, of proponents of identity consciousness effectively not having a normative system. Another way of putting it, a more technically correct way of putting it, is that um, their normative system equates to being reactive to the, to the ideological narrative, which effectively makes them um, contiguous to the... the, the um, you know, it, it makes them a block. It makes them a political block um, that is effectively led by the general principle, which could be something like the Führer principle, um, the principle of, of protection of the identity and 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 uh, requiring it to be saved in through through a kind of a concert or concerted collective. Um, uh, disposition and and set of of uh, coordination uh, which is yeah, I mean I, I don't know how to describe that other than fascistic um, but essentially because the um, the ideological narrative is equated with an innate conditioning uh, that is inherited from history or or some kind of sociological interpretation that you're just kind of sat with those conditions with that set of 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 facts that that those facts cast a a very particular reactive shadow um and so it's sort of you know uh react in line with the narrative that is their normative system is is to um, react to the narrative, which is just kind of table thumped as that is what is happening, and if anyone is dissuading you that that is what is happening, or offering a different interpretation, and talking about normative things, uh, and 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 the choice of one's normative framework, then you just call them racist, deluded, white supremacist. Um, which works according to to the ideological narrative. So the ideological narrative, effectively, is fundamentally um, insulated. That I mean, almost ninety percent of it is insulation. That it's so-called critical perspective and critical arguments, 
is merely a way to keep the narrative in effect uh, which which the conditions with the which the set of facts is said to speak and to voice and therefore it must be reacted to it must be answered um, by by uh, the the salvation creed by you know um, you know it, 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 it is describing a sacred victim that needs to be protected um, and and then there is a kind of idea of, of, of membership in in this in this narrative in this collective story and so you know the ability to um, so in some sense you know you know in some technical sense you can describe it as a normative system in that you have the duty to react according to the narrative so that that is their that, that is the character of their normative value system is to simply react according to the internal rationale and logic that is locked into the narrative and 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 its interpretation of, of its set of facts so you know it, it's it's almost somewhat paradoxical because everyone else just has interesting interpretations but they are somehow have access to um, uh, a solid foundation which uh, which they gain privy uh, uh, access to via um, that they are a identity as opposed to some other identity and so no one else can dissuade them you know this is the kind of insulation that uh, that's built into it um, you know only uh, only someone with with supposedly the same set of of credentials is even given an iota of credence which then has to sort of which you have to go through the motions of of, of making um, at least a mock argument which doesn't step one foot beyond its narrative you know it, it doesn't substantiate its narrative claim it just begs the question within its narrative framework it says well aren't you derailing the narrative framework uh you know th that's almost what it just keeps on table thumping is is why are you derailing the narrative framework you know which it keeps on implying subtextually that this is innately true there is no alternative perspective there's no choice in perspective or in interpretation it's a fact and the fact belongs to the collective um in a kind of in an equal way uh, in which uh, everyone has an equal duty to apportion the blame um, where it lies according to the ideal so whoever controls the ideological framing whoever you know is is you know essentially um, you know the kind of the the hypothetical demagogue who is trying to protect the identity you know so it's, it's the sort of it, it, it that, that is what would in in fictional um uh metaphor uh in in the lord of the rings would be the one ring the which the ring of power which which you know is unheard of because it, it's sort of alien but there's there's one ring that binds all the identities um and and which all identities should be commanded and follow and that uh, uh, has a kind of invisible power over all of them because it's all reducible um, into you know uh, statistics, maths, quotas, you know, uh, um, and whoever, whoever, fr but but you know, like it's such a brittle thing because how do you cut those statistics? You know, like why should you? Why should that be a category as opposed to some other category? Why should it be racial groups rather than some other um, differentiation? Um, you know why are you tracking those entities as if they are they are real entities um, that are contiguous and homogenous when they are not homogenous within themselves they are homogenous according to some kind of historical inter interpretation and perhaps according to some kind of arbitrary sociological uh, you know well you decided to say what is the average of that group why do that why not some other group why not um splice elements of that group with elements of another group and track that grouping 
you know, like, like by what definition, by, by, by what are you apportioning relevance to that designation? You know, so essentially it's arbitrary designations. And so, you know, you have to weigh, you, you have to create a counter thesis, essentially, that, um, or a reactionary thesis, that the reason why we have these designations is because we have been exploited along that, 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 that descriptive um, factor, even though that that exploitation is by no means an equal disadvantage um, that, that has been burdened by, in, by actual persons. And so they just, you know, it, it's, it gets too much to think about it at some point, and they would rather just have the simplification which gives them a groupthink um, and gives them essentially a slave morality to fall back on so that they never have to navigate life via anything other than the ideological narrative. So if anything doesn't go their way, if anything doesn't um, facilitate their self-esteem, it's because the ideology has not been... Um, championed in the public square it does not have enough political control does not have enough um, expression you know and so it's the one size fits all solution there's no other explanation other than that you know so in this way it becomes a self-fulfilling um, mantra that just gets louder and louder and louder until it sort of you know it burns down things that won't concede to it it just sort of um Anyway, I just thought that was an important point to, to sort of, it might, might be an interesting element there.